How do you think a football is made? The people who make it get the, um, kill the cows, take the skin and put them on, and then the meat, they um, get the meat for the payment. Where do you think it comes from? Somewhere around Africa, America, it well, depends. they're nowhere near uh, each I bet it's one of those things that's like made in China. Maybe, yeah, 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 all over the world. It's so like made China. in any yeah, China. 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 In fact, most of the footballs we buy come from one town in Pakistan and are hand-stitched by people who get paid as little as 60p a day. Six years ago, 28-year-old entrepreneur James Lloyd decided to try and change things by introducing fair trade the world of football. Footballs were largely being made in Pakistan and the conditions of the football workers were generally very poor. There was lots of child labour, uh, and the wages paid for people making the footballs were very low. How are you? Not bad. Good. The potential for fair trade was therefore huge in the production of footballs, um, and our business sprung out of that. The price of a football includes a fair trade premium that pays for education, health care, and community loans for the workers and their families. Consumers pay a 20% fair trade premium on every fair trade football produced. That's anything between 20 pence and two pounds per football, um, which might seem a very small tax on us as consumers, but actually has a huge impact on people's lives in Pakistan. To find out what fair trade means for the people who make the footballs, we've come to a town called Sialkot in Pakistan, the football production center of the world. Over 85% of the world's footballs are made here, more than 40 million every year. For hundreds of villagers outside Sialkot, stitching footballs is the main family income. Traditionally, this was low paid work, but making fair trade balls guarantees a better wage. <laughs> We get 40p for a fair trade ball, 20p for non fair trade. Today, we've only got one fair trade football each because the orders are low. But during the World Cup, there's loads of work. Everybody wants footballs. We get seven or eight a day. Once I did ten. The money from the fair trade premium pays for an infant school attached to the stitching centre so the women can bring their children to work with them. It's free, so children who might not otherwise go to school can get a basic education. When I buy a ball, I look for the brand, just like, because I know it's a better type of football normally. I, I usually look for, like, brand as well, because um, so, I, don't I don't really buy balls from, like, the pound shop and stuff. I like the brands, and they're famous, and, and they're better quality. Brands are very dominant in sportswear, and this is what we have as a problem as competitors. In this country, the proportion of fair trade football sales are probably under 1% of total football sales. Fair trade products often cost more, but these footballs cost less than the major brands. This is our top selling football, so team footballs, retails for £9.80. Um, perfectly good quality, non PVC football. Now, if you compare this to some of the other brands, this one's for £14.99, uh, this one's for £14.99 as well. Now, what would you rather? An ethically produced fair trade football? for a tenner, or another brand for more money with no fair trade label. James's fair trade footballs are having a huge impact on this village near the stitching centre. Kiran is 16, and all her family work in the football trade. I live with my mother and I have six brothers and sisters. We all live together. My father died, and I decided to leave school because we didn't have enough money at home. But because of fair trade footballs, we've been able to earn more, and I'm still able to go to school. Uske baad ji, aapke paas lag two over five. Take it. 
जैसा कि मैं स्कूल जाती हूँ आई रियली लव स्कूल हालात पूरी तरह से कवर नहीं आई वॉन्ट कैरी ऑन इन माई एजुकेशन And sometimes my mother still struggles financially. So if I have any spare time, I help her stitch footballs. During the summer holidays and after school, Kiran works with her family to help bring in extra money. अगर हमें ज़्यादा से ज़्यादा फेयर ट्रेड के फुटबॉल मिले, तो मेरी मदर जैसे कि मेरी माँ। The more fair trade footballs we are given, the more our mother will be able to support my education and my brothers and sisters' education. I want my future to be good. If I continue my education, then we will be okay. The fair trade premium also pays for medical care for everybody in the village. Last year, Kiran's aunt was very ill, but with free medicine, she can carry on working. I'm having treatment. The doctor here can't treat me because I need specialist care. I've got bad problems with my head and my heart. My medicine's expensive. If it wasn't for the free health care, I wouldn't be able to afford the medicine and I wouldn't be able to survive. That's because of fair trade. Most people in this area depend on footballs to earn a living, and one of the aims of fair trade is to break that dependency by giving people the opportunity to start their own business. Stitchers and their families can borrow money through a scheme called microcredit to invest in new projects, such as buying cattle or opening a shop. Almost 300 different businesses have been funded this way. Kiran's cousin Shazad. Borrowed money to open a snooker hall. It's packed every evening, and Shazad doubles his income by cutting hair between games. Before I opened this, there was nowhere for people to go, so we just used to hang around at each other's houses. Now everyone can get together here. It's much better. I can make about four to five pounds a day doing this. Much more than I could make stitching footballs. If I hadn't been able to borrow that money, I would probably be unemployed, roaming the streets, just hanging around. And next door to the snooker hall, another young entrepreneur has borrowed money to set up the first video shop in the village. I started off with 200 films and gradually built things up. Now I've got over a thousand. Plus, I bought a TV and a DVD player. My business started to make money, and that's where I am today. I think microcredit is the cream and the cake of our fair trade scheme. Um, it eff effectively enables people to get out of the export economy, stitching footballs, to uh, engaging in a business that's local to their local community and culture. I'd like to see a lot more fair trade criteria. Being applied to products like T-shirts, uh, like footwear, like football kits, uh, where, which we have the potential to produce. Um, my real hope is for footwear in the future. Uh, proper trainers uh, that will appeal to younger people in this country.